Hi guys, welcome back to the Real Talk with Re podcast. I'm your host, Re, funnily enough, because Real Talk with Re, yeah, that's me. So I got diagnosed with ADHD and on a previous episode of the podcast, I discussed this, where I was at with it, but that was before the diagnosis. So the actual assessment was a week ago. In fact, it was a week ago today. So I'm seven days in. I'm 40 years old, a 40 year old girly, because I still don't feel like an actual adult enough to call myself a woman. So yeah, as a 40 year old girly, mum of four, (laughs) sad, isn't it? That I can't actually call myself a woman. Don't feel like a real grown up. But yeah, as a 40 year old person diagnosed a week ago. So we're just going to unpack how that feels. I'm going to explain the process I went through and why it wasn't at all what I expected and how I feel now and the whole mixed bag of emotions that have come up for me since. And ultimately, was it worth doing? Do I feel any better? And where do I go from here? So you may have seen the diagnosis day vlog over on my mummy of four channel if you have not seen that yet I will link that below along with the previous episodes in fact I'll just there'll be a playlist of all things ADHD so if you want to find out the whole journey where it's gone from beginning to end you can check all of those videos out on that mummy for YouTube channel and in that playlist I'll link down in the show notes if you're listening in your via your favorite podcast provider if you are hello um please leave me a review please snap a little picture of whatever you're doing while you're listening tag me real talk with Ree podcast uh, over on Instagram or mummy for UK either one um, and if you're listening on YouTube, hello, you can physically see me waving. Um, please make sure you are subscribed to this channel. You leave me a little like, a little comment below just to say hi and introduce yourself. It really helps to support the channel. Anyway, where was I? Let's get back on track, going on a little side quest. Um, so yeah, all of that is available to watch, but I'm just going to give you a little overview of the process. So I first um, realized ADHD may be a factor back in 2021 where I had an Instagram live chat with a blogger friend of mine Katie from what Katie said and that full chat is available to watch that video will be linked below and in that chat it was like oh gosh I do that oh I oh I struggle with that until I put this in place and it was it was mind-blowing actually it's that moment where I walked away going oh I didn't think Like I never in a million years thought I had ADHD, but then I didn't really understand what ADHD looked like in women. So for me, if someone said, do you think you have ADHD? Before that moment, I would have said 100% not, no way. And in that moment in 2021, you can see it in my face if you watch the video, I'm like, oh, oh God, oh. And then, I mean, don't get me wrong, there are certain symptoms that people can go, yeah, I do that. But it's when there's like consistently across the board, like there might have been one thing if you watch that video where you thought, yeah, I do that. But if it's only one thing, it's unlikely to be ADHD. If it's lots and lots of different random little things, and it is random little things. Um, and there will be future podcast episodes where we, we go into in depth what specifically I've noticed about myself uh, that really has indicated ADHD and which things about myself I've realized can be explained by ADHD. So make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel podcast and so you don't miss any of that but yeah today (laughs) I had this kind of like moment in 2021 and it took me until 2023 to make a GP appointment and I was really having very much a tidy up of my mental health I did some therapy sessions um I started some therapy sessions I took a break from it I'm still doing a few um but I started some therapy sessions back then to deal with some stuff that went on you know back from childhood, um, I think a lot of the ways we behave, the ways we react to things today in our adulthood can often be linked back to something that hasn't quite been, let's just put it tidied up from our childhood, something that happened that we didn't resolve, that wasn't healed over, that wasn't explained to us in the right way. And my personal belief is that Therapy is like decluttering of the mind. It's like our minds are like messy, cluttered surfaces with 
you like old scabby food going off in certain places and, and if we can tidy those up we can just live a much easier life now by tidying up that stuff from before so i went to see the gp as kind of part of this like mental declutter as like well while i'm kind of dealing with this stuff i may as well just look into do i have adhd and genuinely all i wanted from it was understanding i know that adhd medication is a thing and we'll, we'll get to that uh, but all i really wanted from that point all i wanted from the assessment was just understanding of myself like is this something i struggle with is this something i need to give myself grace for or is it in my head is it all in my head is it you know what um there is a bit of a, a movement online like oh everyone's got adhd at the moment it's like it's become trendy well no has everyone got adhd suddenly at the moment because it's trendy are people jumping on a bandwagon no it's more likely that awareness the internet has given us this information and people that have struggled and not really known why their whole lives are now like oh wow i feel seen this applies to me and if it hadn't been for that conversation with katie back in 2021 i might still be oblivious i might still be totally oblivious and just not knowing why i struggled with certain things like concentrating on boring elements of my job um and then being able to throw myself into a hyper focus where i don't even look up for other more kind of deep work things so anyway i went to the gp expecting to be laughed out of the room i don't know why i get this kind of imposter syndrome in my own life role but uh i do seem to get and stomach rumbling apologies i'm hungry um i do seem to get this in various places in my life in my work and what i do thinking oh what are people gonna think because i was like i went in like you know i'd written notes down because i knew i'd figure out what i was gonna say otherwise i'd written notes down on my phone to say to the gp and it's like oh he's gonna laugh me out of his office is he gonna ask me to justify why i want this referral and he literally just went here's the form fill it in and bring it back I was like, oh, okay, I was there ready, you know, ready to tell him all this information. He didn't want to know that. So I filled in the, I said, right, I'm going to tell you now, this could be a very ADHD thing uh, to say. If I take that form home, you're never going to see it again. So I'm going to film it, fill it in the waiting room and give it back to you now. And there is an element of, I already knew this about myself and this is why I have strategies in place. Um, so I gave it back to him and that form was very telling. It was very much indicating I needed to be assessed in a quite extreme way. So following the GP, I then had a letter, which interestingly, if someone is struggling with ADHD and doesn't have strategies in place, sending a letter saying, uh, we have put you on the wait list for an ADHD assessment. If you wish to stay on the waiting list, please phone this number by a certain date and confirm that you want to stay on the wait list. If not, we'll remove you from the list. And while I understand the NHS is overburdened and I know they don't want people wasting their time, I get it. If you are on a waiting list <laughs> for ADHD, it's probably because you struggle with this very thing, okay? It's prob so I kind of knew that uh, I had two options. I could open, once I opened the letter, I could phone the phone number that very moment before putting the letter down, which is luckily what I chose to do, or... I could put it down, it could end up under a, like I've got a, I've got a secret pile of um, stuff I need to deal with in like a tray under my desk. I could put it in there and I'd probably never see it again. Or I would declutter it next year going, oh, I didn't deal with that, did I? So the irony of sending people on the waiting list for ADHD a letter saying, if you don't ring us, then we're not going to keep you on the waiting list is, uh, does not escape me. So um, I phoned up and they said that it was going to be um, a few months before uh, the first appointment, which is a psychiatric evaluation. And then it would be about a year before the next part, which is the actual assessment. And um, about, let's see, it's April at the time I'm filming this, actually the very last day of April. So tomorrow it's going to be May. Yes. Who else is singing the NSYNC song now? But um, it must have been... March time that I thought oh I wonder how long it's going to be I'm just going to phone up the number and just see where I am on the list and the reason I thought about this I was thinking about my children's assessments my children have autism if you're new around here um so I had to do quite a lot of fighting to get them assessed um and then I so I phoned them up um just thinking well if it was my kids I would phone wouldn't I I'd chase it so I just thought just out of curiosity just so I know in my own mind how long it's going to be 
and they said oh it's going to be two or three years like hang on a second it was only going to be a year a year ago that what was going on and they said oh we're short staff of this problem that problem she said do you want the number for complaints and just went um okay then so again i phoned it immediately because if i'd procrastinated it it never would have happened and just said look um I was told it was going to be a year and I'm going to told it's going to be another two or three. Just that doesn't seem right. Doesn't seem fair to people that clearly like this is not only going to be me, it's going to be affecting. Um, gosh, my stomach's making noises. I'm so hungry. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I left this answer message. They phoned me back and said, right, we'll look into it. And then a few days later, I had a phone call with my appointment. So that appointment was yeah, was last week. It was seven days ago. And this is the bit that if you have not seen that vlog, you will not know about. You will not know about that if you're just a podcast listener, you're not a vlog watcher over on my main channel. So I was really nervous going to the appointment. I don't know why, but I was. I was really nervous. Um, I I don't know what I... Th- I Obviously, logically, I didn't think someone was going to say to you, you, you're wasting our time. Get out. <laughs> but I think subconsciously, that's what I was worried about. And ultimately, for me, not knowing is the worst. I like to know stuff and then I know where I am and I know how to deal with things. And I didn't know um, what I was dealing with. I didn't know, do I have it? Do I not have it? Was it going to be someone nice doing the assessment? And ultimately, I think some of the frustration and nervousness before things like this comes from having quite negative experiences, especially with all my gynae issues. Uh, There's a whole lots of videos explaining them over on my main channel but long story short I had excessively heavy bleeding for well years um that was ignored and poo-pooed by a number of health professionals especially one male registrar who was awful to me and really belittled how I was feeling um so I think all of that stuff was probably coming up for me as well as well as the like the fights and the battles I had to go through to get the children diagnosed but I think probably it's easier for me to fight for my children. I find it harder to fight for myself. I don't know why that is. I, th- I think that's probably pretty common across parents, mums generally. Um, but yeah, I think these quite negative experiences from my gynae stuff were kind of coming into play. So I went into the appointment. I think I arrived, I was in a bit of a fluster because the place I was planning to park, turns out I couldn't park there. Um, and I just, I didn't want to be late. Managed to get there on time. And I think... It was probably only about 10, 15 minutes they had me waiting, but it was enough time to be like, oh, you know, stay chill, stay chill. And then the woman was was really lovely. She took me through to a separate room and went through these questions. And the questions were not like, um, I think I was just confused, not confused, surprised, I suppose, that the ADHD assessment was so, so different to the autism assessments that I'd witnessed. Now, obviously, the autism assessments I'd witnessed were through one with glass and were on small children. So my children were all assessed. Let's see, Will must have been four or five. I have to think back. Um, yeah, about to turn five, maybe. And then the girls were about five when they were assessed. But they were, you know, they were quite young. Um, but the autism assessment, and I have got a video on my main channel explaining exactly what goes on it's called the ados ados um exactly what went on the ados assessment i came back from i think bella's and just you know brain dumped um and what went on the assessment and lots of other parents have said it was helpful to know uh what that was going to be but ultimately it was things like 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 mcqueen was under a blanket and then they lifted it up and they saw how the reaction was and then they were looking at a picture and they were looking for not like uh, i can't think for the term but qualitative i can never say the word um like more uh, report-based things that then did get scored, but they were looking for like a reaction or an eye contact or um, and how they emotionally responded to a certain situation. It wasn't like a tick box thing. And the ADHD assessment, which is called a DIVA-5, D-I-V-A-5, and I went through um, the exact, like, more about the process um in depth in that vlog i did on the day so make sure you you check out that video i'll link it below but i think the biggest thing that surprised me was it wasn't like how did she react to this did she make eye contact contact or whatever and it wasn't even do you do this some never sometimes often or always like in the initial screenings the initial screening from the gp was one side of a4 and it was you know, it asked you a question and then it asked you how often you did the thing. 
the the questions in the diva five in the adhd assessment were like do you do this either tick yes or not tick no and some of the questions were are these is this present like do you do it now in adulthood and then some of the questions were did you do these things as a child before a certain age and i think i was just really surprised that it was so black and white i suppose it was like it is or it isn't and i was trying to elaborate on points and the assessor i guess she's a doctor a psychiatrist was like look this is you know we, we just kind of need a yes or no on this because i was trying to, on some questions being like oh well i used to do this until this and it felt more like i don't know it was just it was just not what i expected at all just not what i expected in the slightest clearly that is the procedure i'm not arguing that i'm not saying it's right or wrong it's just not what i expected i guess i thought it would be more like the autism assessment and i don't know why i thought that because obviously it's a different challenge it's it's all spectrum stuff but autism and adhd are very separate distinct things with very separate distinct challenges so why they wouldn't be assessed in a totally different way I don't know. And maybe the adult autism assessment is more like that. I mean, if anyone has had an autism assessment as an adult, um, I don't know what that looks like. I'd love to hear. I say even my eldest, um, let's see, when our eldest was assessed, how old was he? Um, 16-ish, maybe 17. But it was during COVID times and my husband took him actually because I had to be somewhere else with the little ones and we weren't even allowed in the building this is why like I think I would have like absolutely been there if I'd had to uh, if I was able to be there but it was literally during COVID times and he was of an age where I think my husband had to wait in the car he wasn't literally wasn't allowed in reception because COVID um and in fact they must have had to do a variation with masks and stuff that must have been challenging but anyway long story short i didn't even witness that older version of the autism assessment so i'd, I'd be genuinely curious to see about the autism assess the actual assessment process for adults um if you have kind of gone through that yourself you've got any personal experience um so you can let me know in the comments if you are watching on youtube um if you're listening via your favorite podcast provider i don't think you can comment as easily can you i wish you could it would be good if you could just comment on um podcast you could let me know in the review you could let you know you could say hey i love this podcast thanks so much five stars and then let me know and answer your question or you can tag me over on stories you can um tag me with Re real talk with re podcast over on instagram or mummy for uk either one um and let me know um so i went into this appointment and I didn't know what to expect. It wasn't in the slightest bit what I thought it would be. And then suddenly it was like she was wrapping it up and she's like, right, okay, so the next steps, she, she did say about three or four times, right, I need you to look out for a letter in the post. Almost like acknowledging that as someone with ADHD, that's something I was going to struggle to do. Right, I need you to look out for a letter in the post, which incidentally hasn't arrived yet. So I need to check the post again. Um, I need you to look out for this letter in the post because it's going to be a medical. I'm like, okay. And then it's medication, she said. Right, okay. So bear in mind, you don't get the results or in the case of my children none of them had the results for autism on the day so i was like so when do i i don't know here get the results whatever she's like oh no now like you have adhd and i was like oh and i can't remember exactly what she said i think she said the mixed kind i'm actually hoping that there's like a more detailed report that is coming through with a letter so i can read about which type because there are there's there's inattentive there's hyperactive and there's this is i'm still learning this stuff um and then there's the i can't think of the word of it but like a bit of both so like um you have both inattentive and hyperactive struggles and in women it's generally hyperactivity within the brain so i i'm not bouncing off the furniture like you would think of a traditionally think of a person with adhd you know i'm not like so full of energy i can't sit down um i am clearly quite talkative which is quite happy you know quite happy coincidence um because talking is what i do for my job hello <laughs> talking to you on this podcast um but i'm not bouncing off the walls so apparently i do have the hyperactivity but more within my brain i mean almost well, like wouldn't it be great to have that much energy though like actually be that energetic i don't know maybe um that just appeals to me because i always feel tired <laughs> but um yeah i apparently have the hyperactivity and also the inattentiveness meaning just the struggles with concentration and staying on task uh while i'm supposed to be working and not going on side quests like oh need to finish uh you know editing this video or whatever and i always get quite excited at the quite creative bits and then when it comes to like finishing up and doing all the 
the boring finishing touches, I'm like, oh, I think I really need to redesign my whole website right now. It's like, no, you don't. You don't need to redesign your whole website. You need to finish what you are doing in the moment, get back on task. So that's like the inattentive thing kind of plays into that. But like I said, I, the discussion about my specific challenges and um, how they do or do not relate to ADHD um, will be coming up in a future episode. So I left the appointment feeling quite, I don't know, just a bit like, oh, um, shocked. I don't know what I was expecting. I wasn't expecting that. I don't think I was expecting to be told just right there and then. I think I thought I had to wait because I think I thought that's what happens in these things because it's what happened with my experience with the autism assessment for the children. So finding out straight away and ultimately I had a sense of relief. I think I was worried that they were going to be like, nope, you don't have ADHD, you're just a bit diffy. <laughs> and I don't know, I, I guess I thought that would be worse. I think I had this sense of relief, a sense of things making sense, a sense of like, oh, I'm not just not trying hard enough. I'm not just mum brain. I put it down to baby brain. I put it down to years and years and years of baby brain. And as our eldest is 19, like I can't remember a time before that. I can't remember a time before, well, obviously I can remember, I can remember being in school and things, but I can barely remember a time before I was a mum. So therefore, it's very challenging for me to remember a time before I had what I thought was baby brain. But then when I think back, you know, to when I was younger, I wasn't calling it baby brain then, but I was very easy, easily super focused on things I was interested in, like certain subjects in school, like where I'd throw myself into drama and know all my lines instantly, or certain, you know, parts of English I get really excited about or whatever, and then other subjects where I would just totally zone out, like maths. I was just like, oh, I just can't even listen to it, um, which is, is mad really because my children love maths, like they love it. Wow. How, I just, it doesn't make sense to me, but they love it. But then they have quite different brains to me. They might look more like me, especially the girls. Um, but the way they're wired is more like my husband. Um, so yeah, initially after the appointment, I felt a sense of relief, but then by the night I did feel quite zoned out which is how I, I mean, I felt zoned out almost in, instantly after the children's assessments and after their results were delivered. So that was twofold. It's kind of good, actually. It just got over and done within one day rather than like, bam, and then another one, bam. I did feel quite zoned out. I felt it very much after the children's because I felt like it had been such a fight. And I think when your adrenaline, adrenaline's been up and you've been fighting and fighting and fighting and then it's over, I felt so zoned out after the children's assessments. I just didn't want to speak to anyone. I didn't want to move I felt very much in freeze mode. I didn't feel that bad after this one, but by the night I felt so drained and like I just didn't want to speak. I didn't want to watch anything. I just didn't want to do anything at all. I just put myself to bed and thought I'm going to wake up tomorrow morning um, and feel better, which I did. But I needed to give myself that grace um, because this has closed a curiosity loop in some ways because it's explained so much and it's allowing me to give myself grace for certain things. But equally, it's like opened up so much like, oh, so what about that? Oh, it's opened up so many questions in my mind, which I will be discussing with you on this podcast as I continue to learn more about myself. Um, so if you are um, dealing with anyone kind of neuro spicy within your family, you potentially see some of the signs in yourself anything like that and you want to know more, please make sure that you, you are subscribed to this podcast and the YouTube channel of this podcast that um, so that you don't miss any of that. But anyway, we're not done yet. We're not done yet. Um, so immediately after, I felt lighter, but then utterly drained and like I need to go to sleep. A week later, how am I feeling a week later? Um, the understanding has given me so much already. Like I can't even tell you the difference it's made. I can, I'm struggling to describe how much of a difference it's made. And I'm hoping I'll get better at that. But having that level of understanding about my brain, it really has changed my perspective. It makes me feel empowered to know where to go for solutions that I know are going to be tailored for me. It makes me realize how far I've managed to come by myself, really, implementing strategies. There are so many strategies. It turns out I, I've been trying... I like The whole time, like this video podcast channel is quite new. It's, it's a baby channel. It's like, less than a year old but my main channel mummy of four 
I started initially in 2017 and I, I picked up properly and really ran with it in 2019 uh, after I kind of relaunched it. So the whole time since 2019 where I've been talking on the internet about making parenting easier and trying to, you know, hack my life to make it smoother. Back then, I didn't know any of my children had autism. I didn't have a clue. I didn't know my husband was neurospicy. I had never heard the term neurospicy. Although back then, I'm not sure if it had been um, coined by the internet. Um, but I didn't know about neurodivergence. I had no clue that I may have ADHD. I just thought, wow, mum life is hard and busy and I do a lot of stuff to try and hold it together and make it easier. And I always got questions from people in my real life saying, wow, how do you manage to do it? How do you juggle it? And I started my channel to share that. All the, the things I'd had to figure out the hard way to share so you don't have to. And have I just been trying to hack mum life or have I been trying to hack ADHD this whole time? I mean, the short answer is probably a bit of both because mum life is incredibly challenging and yes we live in a generation where we're so empowered with this generation of women to be so empowered so we can work and we can achieve anything but as long as we still look after our children and we basically have two lots of 24 hours in every day so whether you have neurodivergence or not that struggle especially for women is still so real so yes I probably have been trying to to hack mum life and I've got to say the things that I've put in place to help me, I find it hard to believe that they would be unhelpful to anyone. Um, some people may lean on them less, but if you are dealing with any kind of additional pressure in your life, which most of us are in some degree, if you have ADHD yourself, then you're going to need a bit more help getting organized. If you've got lots of children, then the more children you have, the more organized you have to be in order to make everything work because there is physically more you have to do. There is more on your to-do list. There are more different activities to organize. There are more people scheduled. There are more clothes to do. If you, some of those children happen to also be on the spectrum or have other additional needs, there is more to deal with there. There are more additional things you have to do. If you also have caring responsibilities for other family members, there is more you have to do. You have to be more organized in order to fit more in your life. So we all have the same 24 hours in our days but we all have different amounts on our plates. And the more you have on your plate, whether that is physical stuff you have to physically do, you have a job that physically takes you away from the house more hours, or you have more emotionally on your mind, you have baggage or trauma from your past, or you have neurodiversity and challenges that neurotypical people don't have. If you have any of these challenges, getting more organized will help you because it will free up your time. Ultimately, I think people think that routine equals restriction. Whereas actually, to me, routine equals having to make less decisions, having to reinvent the wheel a lot less, and routine equals freedom in the long term because you're automating as much as possible to free up your time and energy for things you want to do, not things you have to do. So this is why I think that I initially started sharing, but I think now as I move forward, I'm like, things are not going to change massively. I'm still going to be sharing things that help me in my life in order to make my life easier. And I think my initial tag tagline a little bit, I don't know, I've never been like super chuffed with it, but I did have to just get to a stage. I'm like, right, I'm just gonna have to get started. Tagline's not perfect. The name of the channel is not perfect, but done is better than the best. Let's get going. And ultimately I've been trying to make parenting easier. Um, I think now I'm still trying to make parenting easier. And if you are a parent that is not aware of any neurodivergence, in your child's life I'm not saying that anything I'm going to say going forward is going to be unhelpful because I don't believe that to be the case but I think going forward I'm going to be talking about how to thrive when you have uh, neurospicy people in your world whether you are that neurospicy person whether your children your extended family if you are um, impacted by neurodivergence within your family you're going to have to put some things in place to make life smoother either for those children or for yourself, or for both. And going forward, that's what I want to share and to talk about. And hopefully in sharing my experiences, that will help some people. Hopefully that will share some things that will impact some people's lives in a positive way. And I can't tell you how much it lights me up when I get messages saying, oh, I've implemented your basket system or whatever. And just things that I've done and become such a normal part of my day-to-day -day that I take for granted and it's absolutely changed my life and ultimately I'm just so grateful for those messages and so grateful I've been able to share those things and if I can continue to keep doing that to keep breaking down okay well what do I do to make this easier 
that I can share? How can I make this easier? How can I trial this system and share what works and doesn't work? How can I trial this other system? Because I am very much a student of all this as well. And I very much, I'm still learning every day. I hope we all are learning every day. I think it's important for our children to know that none of us have it totally sussed and we're all learning every day. It, you know, it humanizes us as parents and it stops that great divide where our children are like, mommy knows everything, I'm never going to know everything. And it just um, puts us all in that kind of growth mindset kind of place. But ultimately, I want to keep sharing what's helping me, the new things I've discovered that are helping me and this journey as it goes ahead because there are a few things that have come up and a few things that I need to consider. So ultimately, people's reactions and then we're going to go on to medication and what I'm going to do about that. So people's reactions to me having ADHD. Um, A lot of people um, in the comments specifically were like, you can't have ADHD, you're organized. ADHD is really hard. I have ADHD and so... I struggle, you don't seem to struggle, so therefore you can't have ADHD. Now, I know it's very difficult because you're only getting a snapshot into people's lives. So during the videos that person has watched, then I am seeming to be quite organized. And I've not, it's not been a video where I've talked about any struggles because I try to show balance. I really do try to because I don't want to come across as I'm perfect and everything I do is, is absolutely perfect. And, um, you should feel inferior to me because I'm perfect and you're not. That's absolutely not the vibe I'm going for. However, I am aware that some videos I'm trying to share this helpful thing, some videos are more vulnerable. And even if you watch every video I've ever put out, I'm still not filming 24-7 of my life. I'm not going to be able to convey it all perfectly. So just because in that video that that person had watched, I didn't seem to be struggling doesn't mean that... I wasn't and I think this is a message to be kind to ourselves when we're we're consuming content online and when we're like oh how come everyone else doesn't struggle and I do it's not the case it's just what they're choosing to share and what you happen to see from what they chose to share and also for me I just need to be kind to myself when and realize that um because people are saying those things it doesn't mean that I don't have it or this has gone wrong you know or that I'm an imposter um it's just that that person hasn't seen the particular struggles that I have and and ultimately I I am like my subsequent children who were diagnosed with autism who were doing better because of the stuff I put in place for their siblings so I think before I had children when I just had one I was drowning in disorganized chaos I'm going to be honest with you I was drowning in it And I guess it was 12 years ago when I was like, right, I'm going to have another baby. So I'm pregnant with Will. I'm like, if I don't get my stuff together now, I'm in trouble. I don't want to be forgetting things. I don't want to feel like I'm letting my child down. I want to be more organized. And I started on a very slow journey of bit by bit, chipping away and putting in strategies to help me juggle what was going to be a baby at home um, that turned out needed a lot of routine. um, And a school-aged child and how I was going to juggle that and then when um well so my second son was diagnosed with autism I put stuff in place for the whole family that suited him but actually made everyone's lives easier so by the time I had Bella so that's baby number three and she was being assessed the general consensus from the assessors was look she's doing yes there's autism at play here but so much of the stuff that we would encourage you to put in place has already put been put in place and she's she's had since birth because it's already in place for the child that she's doing much better than we would expect someone to be at this stage of the journey where they where it was like the first child in the family that's been diagnosed i hope that makes sense so for me i might have only just been diagnosed with adhd but i have been trying to put stuff in place to get organized to hack mum life for years for years and years and years and it's it's probably 12 years ago it's probably at that point where I realized I was having baby number two that I really had a word with myself and really was like you gotta do something here you gotta do something you've got to get more organized because my uh my brain was cluttered our home felt cluttered my everything just felt cluttered everything felt messy and like there were no system I wasn't meal planning I was buying food and throwing it out or we we didn't have anything for dinner it was it, it was it was not even organized chaos, I'm going to be honest. So 
to those people saying, oh, you can't possibly have ADHD. It's like, well, actually, it's as if I was diagnosed years ago and I've been putting things in place. I just, I guess every time I was having a baby and I thought, I've really got up my game now. I've got to put more in place. I've got to get more organized. It ultimately helped me and helped me with something I didn't even know I had. Um, the other one... <laughs> The other one that's really shocked me a little bit actually is when I've told people in my real life and online actually that I've got ADHD and they're like yeah of course you have and I was like whoa um I only just found out recently has it been that obvious this whole time did everyone else know and I didn't and that has been a little bit of something to come to terms with and maybe it's just because they've seen my videos and they've come along the journey with me and when I pointed out all the things it then seemed obvious maybe it's that or maybe people have known for years before I even knew um, and that's been a little bit of a, um, a weird one to digest. Largely, people have been very supportive and lovely. Of course, it's the internet, so some people haven't, you know, that's just sad, but how it goes. Um, I did have a few people saying, oh, I don't think you've got ADHD, I think you've got autism. Um, so I thought, oh, I didn't think that, but let's check because, you know, I'm not too too big or too clever to to. to take pointers I guess so I did an autism screening um, which um, indicated very much that uh, it showed the AQ the autism quotient and the EQ um, I will put a link below for you to to have a look at the one I did um, and ultimately my AQ autism quotient was very very low indicating nowhere near the um, threshold to indicate autism and my EQ, my empathy quotient, not emotional quotient, empathy quotient, um, was much higher, like much, much higher than the level that would indicate autism. So um, if the autism quotient is high and the empathy quotient is low um, within certain thresholds, it would indicate autism. And if it's the other way around, so it's a low autism quotient and high empathy quotient, it indicates not autism, which is what it indicated with me. I also did ask in the ADHD assessment, do you think we see autism here? And they said no. Um, so... Yeah, that's, um, that was just kind of responding to, it wasn't many people, but people that I'm sure, and I'm sure it came from a place of love and I didn't want people to take it the wrong way, but I just, when those results came back, they didn't surprise me because what I have learned about ADHD, which is a lot more than I knew, but although I feel like I've got a long way to go and what I know about autism, which is a fair amount, but equally I'm still learning every day. Um, it felt like my challenges aligned far more with ADHD than my children's challenges, which align more with autism. So yeah, how am I feeling about it all now? Um, largely positive. The big question now is medication, which I think I said at the beginning was not why I started this journey. I just wanted understanding. However, the doctor, I think she's a doctor, doctor, psychologist, psychiatrist, um, yeah, I guess she was a doctor um, who did my assessment was just seemed very much that the next logical step is medication. And she told, she gave me the name of the medication. She told me wait, to go away and do my research about pros and cons. Um, apparently, she said she'd be prescribing it and you would take it in the morning. And then I would be, my brain would be quieter and more focused during the day. And, and her words, not mine, that sort of by about five o'clock, if I took it at breakfast time, the focus would kind of drift away and I'd be back to as I am now, which sounds very appealing. I'm going to be honest. Uh, she said that there are side effects that I could experience from it, but she suggested that I give it a go. And I think I need to be open-minded to that because ultimately I can do all my research. And obviously if I come across some terribly negative side effects that are very damaging and scary, then perhaps that would change my mind. But from what I've read so far, I wonder, should I give it a go? Um, I'm still very much in the early days of um, knowing about ADHD medication, thinking about ADHD medication. So if anyone has any firsthand experience or has seen some excellent resources or videos or whatever talking about it, then please uh, leave me information down in the comments if you're watching on YouTube and um, tag me on Instagram with your thoughts or DM me over on Instagram Um Real Talk with Re podcast or Mummy for UK if you are listening or you could you could leave the information in the review like I say leave a review of the podcast say thanks thanks Re for the podcast love it love it leave five stars please do that um, and leave the information in a review but yeah I'd be really interested to hear other people's experiences with medication this is a very lovely community and I'm very grateful for all of your input and I hope that I can share some 
important insights that I have picked up from my world that will help improve your, you know, little tweaks you can implement in your day-to-day lives that will help. But equally, I'm grateful for all I can learn from you guys too, because it's very much a two-way street. And for that, I'm super, super grateful. So thanks for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk with Ree. And I shall see you guys in the next one next week. Mwah.